Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. The earthquakes along the Sawtooth Vault Zone there in Idaho have continued to rock and roll. There was two, a magnitude 4.0 yesterday. So I want to cover what may be causing these earthquakes, the Idaho Batholith and the Absorica Volcanic Supergroup that extends all the way into Yellowstone. Yesterday in Stanley, Idaho, there was a magnitude 4.0 earthquake, 12.2 kilometers in depth. 78 people reported feeling this, and according to the Moment Tensor Ball, we have uplift. This is part of the Chalice Volcanic Field. Absorbic Volcanic Supergroup were all formed when the Farlon Plate descended underneath the North American Plate. Also yesterday, there was another 4.0 earthquake, 10 kilometers in depth. They often put 10 kilometers when they're not exactly sure. 15 people reported feeling that earthquake. Here is the location of that one 4.0. And then the other one, close to that same location. Now this area, let me pull this out. There's the Sawtooth Fault Zone has lots of volcanic flows, and I mean lots. And there is even rhyolite flows. Rhyolite comes from the crust of the earth, and basalt comes from the mantle of the earth. A little bit down south, here is an area where the ridges have flows of over 14 miles long dike intrusion of rhyolite, and other types of uh, magmas. And I tried to circle it out in orange for you. On Google Earth, they have drawn out here the Sawtooth Fault Zone. I don't know if you can see that in red. They believe it probably actually extends even farther out. In the last week, there's been over 60 earthquakes in this location. 60. The largest this week being the two 4.0s, and there's been other 3.0s as well. USGS has an image of Idaho and its different basins. We got in blue, light blue, the Idaho Batholith Rocks. Down here in red, of course, that's the Snake River Plateau. That's the Yellowstone Hotspot Rocks. The green is the chalice volcanic rocks. These are all magma flows. And we got some way over here on the border in green with the uh, Wyoming and Idaho um, border. We also have the Columbia River Basin, which is kind of that brown there. Again, all this vocalism was formed as a Farlon plate subducted underneath the North American plate going all the way up to Wyoming and the Yellowstone hotspot. Um, the recent activity, some scientists believe, is because of the Farlon plate slowly um, subsiding underneath the Yellowstone hotspot and melting and bringing up new magma. Here they have a map on geology, isu.ed. This rift zone of the Snake River Plateau has sunk, where on the sides we got mountain building. The circles are the rhyolite calderas of volcanic fields. All this volcanic activity has damaged the lithosphere for this entire area. Recent studies of the lavas there at the crater of the moon show that it is um, it does have a percentage of rhyolite in the magma flows. This volcanic eruption happened only about 2,000 years ago. Another more recent eruption was 12,000 years ago, which was Black Butte Crater. I keep telling you that geology is a relatively new, untapped science. Half of what they thought was true turned out not to be true and there's still much to be discovered. Until the 1950s, according to uh, this paper here, 
Geologists thought the Absaraka rocks were part of the Yellowstone Volcanic Province. A geology graduate student showed that they were entirely different types of rock, separated by time up to 50 million years. Here's another image of the volcanic activity from the Absaraka volcanic activity. You can see we got it up here by Yellowstone Lake, um, down south, off north, and then down towards Salt Lake City. All this lithosphere has been damaged by past volcanic eruptions. In short, what it means is the crust of the ground is much thinner and much more fragile. More prone to more volcanic activity, more prone to earthquakes. Here we have Idaho Falls and this yellow area that I have drawn out is close to uh, Soda Springs where in 2018 they were having all the earthquakes. Remember that? These are current hot spots that have been located, documented. I might end up jumping around a little bit, but how does this all connect to the Chalice volcanic field, you may ask? I believe there is magma coming up because of the recent earthquake activity. We have magma coming up, creating pressure, causing these earthquakes. I also drew out the Shoshun lava field. We also have um, some different scarps. Over here we have the North Roberts Lava Field. Can you see that in orange, light orange, how big that is? And this is the Shoshun Lava Field. And I want to jump over to the Abstaraka Volcanic Super Group, which is in Yellowstone. And I notice this, the Sunlight Volcano, right smack dab in the middle. We also got the Washburn Volcano. Um, but the only one that I've actually put on Google Maps right now was a sunlight uh, volcano. You notice over here we got the Buffalo Bill Dam. This is all stuff that they do not talk about. Here we have the sunlight volcano. Let me zoom into it. Somewhere in there was its vent. An aerial view of Sunlight Basin, Hard Mountain Detachment Blocks, indicated with red dots lines on faults there's a lot of faults throughout this area um, this was drawn by um, gw pierce in 1997 using google maps there is some tremendous lava flows in this location i mean they're just huge and then i want to come down here to what's called the Chinese Wall. This was caused by dike intrusion. This is a huge event, much like what happened in Hawaii, where a fault line a vent opened up coming up from um, the mantle and allowing lava to flow. All this geologic evidence is still there to witness, to look at, to view it wasn't blown out which made me wonder because a majority of this was supposedly blown out during the last uh, volcanic eruption it is right on the eastern edge where luckily it wasn't blown out and we still have this to view in this article they have an image of this chinese wall I'll try and show it to you bigger. Look at how tall this venting, what still remains from this eruption, um, what, a million years ago, hundreds of thousands of years ago? We got a small building here in the foreground, some trees, a fence line. But look at how tall this dike intrusion is. It's, it's utterly amazing. In this paper, too, they have an image of Sunlight Volcano. And they also have um, a map here of the venting that came from this volcano. It's like, wow. Here's the venting of the volcano, the different um, lava flows. And down over here, we got Buffalo Bill Dam, the reservoir. 
again going back to this map here this is part of the Abstratska range that was covered by glaciers and we'll come all the way down because we got Salt Lake City down here and those of you that have followed me re will remember when I talked about the uh, fossilized trees the fossilized forest there at Yellowstone they have an image of that here too this volcanic system is not far from the Sour Creek uh, resurgent dome it's not far from the Turn Lake area um, that new thermal area um, where the trees had died and fallen on the ground and were burned up because of the heat coming up from the ground um, these trees were turned into charcoal going back to the geology.isu.education page it says here the chalice volcanic group covers approximately 25,000 square kilometers in Idaho making it the largest of the Ocene volcanic field the Ocene geological setting of the chalice volcanic is commonly accepted as the extensional basin basin related to the subduction of the oceanic Farlon plate beneath the continent of the North American plate the convergence rate of the Farlon and the North American plate was very fast the angle of subduction was shallow and the subducting slab of the Farlon plate reaches far as eastern Wyoming underneath the North American plate this far reaching subduction slab set the stage for widespread volcanism along the northwestern side of the United States and southwestern British Columbia and this is interesting it says here following the westward migration of the subduction back arch extensional basin developed and triggered widespread igneous activity that younger that youngs in the westward direction this might explain the younger eruptions of 2000 and 12,000 years ago along the snake river plateau and i'll give you a link to this page as well you know there's no such thing as a dead volcano and they found that out when uh, mount st helens erupted yeah, they thought that was a dead volcano, too. So, anyways, that's all I have for you right now. If any thoughts or comments or questions, please put it down below. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. Please stay safe. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.